in the sports world. And what do you think about that quoting? So you have Nick Nick Batum comes out. That you have a game is the biggest day. But yeah, no, I get it. They're, they're focused. I think it's a really big game compared to what you need to do towards the end of the season. I'll tell you what. Everything that they're doing right now, that they're not shying away from it. I love that Nick Nurse. You embrace it. Yeah, I love that Nick Nurse the other night sat Kyle Lowry and, and, and sat Tyrese Maxey. They could have played. Right. And he's all about preparation. He's all about setting it up for success towards the back end. He wants to win now, but also he wants to make sure he keeps winning. And I think that's the most important thing. And then with the, with the craziness that the Magic entered that game that night, on it, it's that's a very, it's still a very talented team, young team, scrappy team. But they're coming right back down to earth, and the Sixers are prime for that sixth spot. And now everybody's thinking like, okay, well, what does that mean for the Bucks and what's going on with them? And I just think that it's setting up a little too nicely. And I know we're all hesitant because we're not things. He's kind of a he's wonky that way. But are are you like in a good spot where the Sixers are right now? How could I not be in a good spot with the team that's the hottest team in basketball right, right. now? No I mean, wants to play him. you just look at the the difference since Joel Embiid's gotten on the floor, and you haven't been able to see all the pieces together. And you could look at that as, oh wow, you know. They're not getting a lot of time together. Or you could look at it as, oh my, they haven't even scratched the surface right. of the potential of what they can be with him out there because they haven't had everyone out there together. And we keep talking about, is this the deepest team with them beat? Is this the number of options they have? The fact that you have DeAnthony Melton playing minutes at all right now. The mm-hmm. fact that you have Tobias Harris back in the lineup. The fact that you saw Buddy Heald knock down five threes. Like, you're sitting there like, okay, well maybe you could move the piece here, move the piece there, the rotation go here. The number of options you have... And the number of different ways you could te- see this team succeeding is so exciting. So, of course, I'm in a great place. Coaching. I feel like yeah. that's you know something we talked about last time I was on. It was just like, oh, you, how's Joel and B going to do? And the next one was like, how's a couple of years? Could that be a scary thing, though? I, I don't want to use the word like scary. We scientist talked about this. scary? Well, it's weird. Now, this is how much I love Amy Fadul. I just need people <laughs> to know out there. As we're doing this show, I see her fiddling with her, sh- with her phone. She's got the Masters on. She's like the see, best. Just to see and I've been fortunate. We've never golfed together. We've golfed behind. behind yes, right. A little bit. Could people be right in thinking like, okay, everybody's praising it like, oh, these pieces. You haven't seen the pieces together yet. Right. These people together and lets them play at least two games together before these play. I don't know that he feels like he needs that. I think if they get that six seed, you mentioned it, they'll have six days off. That's this. I call him coach practice in the best way. Yeah, he loves practice yeah. and, he, and he runs through that. Yeah, you want to see them, but I know we've talked about it before. He didn't need it a lot with the Raptors. He's got he's had preparations for this for months. End game of those Spurs between the end of regulation and the end of the first overtime is all I needed to see as far as in game adjustments and play calling. And I thought when he gets the full complement, just watch out. Yeah, I I, I said it on the show, Amy. Uh, I think it was after we had you on when he was on the floor with Joel Embiid how he didn't run plays for Buddy Heald when he was on the floor with Joel Embiid, and they still found him right. in spots. And then, if you noticed it, and I know you did, side out of bounds, underneath out of bounds, they ran plays for Buddy Heald. Yeah. And it, was a, it, it looked like it was kind of secondary, where it's Embiid, you know, floating, and everybody's eyes are on Embiid, and here comes Buddy Heald off of a pick into the corner, open, catch, shoot, three. I, I, I just think he is, I do, I th- I've called him this earlier this year, I think he's a mad scientist. Yeah. I really do, and I in think the best way. it might be uh, Joel Embiid's your biggest piece going forward in playoffs, as we know, and Tyrese Maxey, but could this be the biggest advantage this organization yeah. has from years past? Let's think about it. Why do people not want to play the Heat? Jimmy Butler, because he turns into a different player, and because of Eric Spolstra. Mm-hmm. That's why. People don't want to play them. Right now, people are thinking similar things about the Sixers. They don't want to play the Sixers because Joel Embiid is back, and even at 75%, Joel Embiid is better than 90% of the players out there. Tyrese Maxey, full on, dropped 50 something. They're behind them working their way. All right, that play at the end of regulation to break Tyrese Maxey free when he's out of the back. Yeah. Buddy Heald sitting over there right in front of the bench. Decoy. You could, his man couldn't leave Buddy Heald because you can't leave a spot up shooter, right? I don't care if Buddy Heald had made a three. He could make a three. In the, so the defender had to come over late. Tyrese Maxey has a clean lane, goes up, ties the game, 111. We're going to overtime. Things like that, I think we're, that raises eyebrows around the league because they're like, uh oh. The Sixers team has talent, and now they've got some guys that can yeah. finish games late with some good play calls. Uh oh. Yeah, and that that play, the hard. I, I used to tell my kids speed, and Tyrese Maxey did a back. great <laughs> job. <laughs> Tyrese Maxey did a great job of taking his defender away, and then getting a full head of steam going to the basket. Boom! There's your pass from Nick Batum from the side court and a layup. And and when I've been around the team an awful lot when they were playoff bound and it was coming up, and there's always been some little things, and you know this as well as anybody, Ray, too. Like there's always been these little things. So the feel is it different to you, Ray, or is it just the anticipa- anticipation of playoffs? 
that kind of you always have. This Eastern Conference, and I start to think, okay, yeah, obviously the Boston Celtics have been head and shoulders better than everyone else. Has there been anyone else that's impressed you consistently this season? Not really. And I look at those, like the factor of the coaching, what you have, the roster that you've put around Joel Embiid, and I think it's so unique because we've seen Harden go all the way back to Ben Simmons, and I don't think I have to talk anyone in this city through that experience. Like, I think you've removed some of that inconsistencies, and we talked so much last year, I think, in the offseason about like the idea of adding another star next to Embiid. Well, you built a team around Joel Embiid right. that I think is unique this year to the experiences we've had in the past. You know, who's going to be the guy that steps up alongside Maxine Embiid? Well, you have a number of options there. When and the idea of that inconsistency kind of being removed and being given other options to be more consistent as a group. And then looking at the conference, I am the New Jersey as the Allen Iverson ceremony will get started around 1 p.m. Uh, there might be some bets going on about how uh, on time, what time Allen might up? be. Uh, he is he is known to be a little late sometimes. Uh, I've I've uh, be late to your own party. Yeah, ex- I, Amy, great <laughs> line. Yeah, he, if if there's a day he can afford to be late and make people wait, today just might be that day. But hopefully we can grab him, get him on air. Pat Croce will be joining us a little bit later. Uh, the team is not doing a shoot around today, so they're not. We're hoping some players. I've gotten word that Nick Nurse will be here, so uh, I'm saying it over air so Nick's listening right yes. now. Hey, come Nick. Come on. Hey, yeah, Coach. We want you to come on air and talk to us. So we're going to have a fun-filled day here. And, Aim, I'm going to put some stuff out to you. You, got, you better have your Allen Iverson memory bank all, right. all polished off because I want to talk about best memories of him. Uh, you covered it. You were here when, when you, you were heard the Wells Fargo Centers as loud, so loud. as it was when, when Matt Cord introduced Iverson when he came back for the second or for came back uh, yeah, as a sixer the second as bet. a yeah. sixer yeah when he came with Denver I was there also and the it was wild but he was on another team and mm-hmm. he was cool he came out and kissed the logo and all that but when he was announced as a member got Allen Iverson stuff coming up for everybody if you have memories that you want to share with us about Iverson 610-632-0975 you can call us we'd love to hear from you love to have a great conversation about the Sixers about Iverson about anything we put all the sports on the table uh, we will uh, just be kind of uh, running at random here today because it's going to be people in and out 975 the fanatic
respect I get at the station. I love it. In Camden, New Jersey, the unveiling of the Allen Iverson stat people in with him, his whole family. That's awesome. Uh, there's going to be some alum. We think uh, the current team will, will show it. Now, they do have a game tonight. Players have their rituals, as we all know, the arena uh, a few hours before the game. What do you think? Yeah, uh, if they're having a walkthrough at 4, and this is at 1, I think that you could swing by. Some of the guys Tyrese does, I yeah, believe, so. yeah. So swing A swing by. Yeah. Show a lot of respect, and I think these players do respect Allen Iverson. Oh, there's no question. To a lot amount. of these players, he was their idol. Exactly. That's who they grew up. He couldn't be three anymore. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be a great day, day down here at the training complex. And Amy, i got to ask you. You were doing a star-laden NBA. I mean, it was filled with superstars during Iverson's career. What are some of your favorite memories of Allen Iverson? Listen, one of my earliest favorite memories, I grew up about 25 minutes from where Allen Iverson grew up. Gated superstar. Yeah. High school football, high school basketball. We were not. We were not good at either of those things. <laughs> Girls basketball, yes. Field hockey, thank you very much. About him long before. I mean, I was a little kid, and here's this guy just bursting on the scene before he would get to state, and here's this tiny little guy, mm -hmm. tiny on the field, around him like, oh, wait, he is. Yeah. Allen Iverson is not. He is the slightest guy. So then when you see when he burst onto the scene at the NBA, and you mentioned it was a super sweet time, and I can hear the theme music, the NBA on TNT right now, and it would come on, and the of activity and the stuff he did, the like shots, and the way that he's able to manipulate his body to make the ball go in. I was a little kid when I remember, it's like, oh, my God, that guy's going to come here? Because you saw highlights on Saturday afternoons of this guy in the ABA, and you're like, Wait, this isn't real. That, right. that, that, like me as a little kid. Then I remember where I was when they signed Moses Malone, which put them over the top, and you were like, that's the piece they needed. That was great. As an adult, as a performer, like, this kid is so much fun to watch. So and much I fun. couldn't wait for him to get there. And, and Ray, you, I, I guess you're a little young for Iverson. Right. Like, having Iverson back, like, the, when you talk about the energy in the, uh, in the center of that night, like, that's more where my, I guess, lived experience of Iverson comes from because – I was so young, and then, you know, obviously his stretch from before that to the end of his Sixers career, a lot of that's just... Kind of how, how, how they won those games, how they won those series. Here's a guy on his... Talk about supporting cast for Joel Embiid. Let's talk about the supporting cast. <laughs> or lack thereof. I mean, listen, some of those guys are going to be here today, so players, all role players. Yeah. There wasn't another second star on that team. There wasn't a bunch of guys like, hey, you can cut up, and this guy might drop 40 for you. There wasn't that. It was Allen Iverson. Here. Six man right. of the year. That, that, that's what was unbelievable about that 2001 run. You had the MVP. You had the coach of the year. You had six man of the year. On a team, like Amy said, was made up. Scotty Rigo is going to join us later. He was the first one to tell me this. I was talking to him about Larry Brown. You know, Got it. And then he stands up, and it's like a maestro. And he lines every day of Pat Croce. Alan, I remember working at the Daily News one time and something happened with Iverson. They're like, you got to go out to his house. I go out there with, you know, a bunch of reporters are there. There's helicopters flying over. I was in the office and, and my boss calls me and he goes, how much, something like, how much do you know about rap music? And I was like, I, nothing. And, and that. And then when he came back and I was covering the Sixers at the time, you know, it, like I said, with that the Nuggets night, or with the Sixers? No, when my boss calls me, he's like, you got to come home right away. And, you know, we're like, we're working this out of because the press conference was here, mm -hmm. but the team was in Oklahoma City. So it was just wild. But what I took most out of it, now, of course, it's Allen Iverson, and you're like, wow. Just sit and watch the way he could entertain with singing. He would sit there and sing, and he was good. Or you'd throw him a paper and a pen. And he'd like draw, draw a cartoon yeah. character. I can look at it. It's truly it's remarkable. It's oh insane. It's insane. And that's God. an area that has produced a ton of football mm -hmm. talent. Mike Vick, all those guys, they all say the best quarterback they ever saw was Allen Iverson. And if Allen Iverson came along now, he would have gone to college. But at the time, they thought he was undersized and the running quarterback just didn't have a place at the time. But he had a big event, this big kind of inner city um, Baltimore, let's come on out and you raise money for different things. And Allen Iverson was the, by far the biggest star. Carmelo Anthony's from Baltimore, coming back to his hometown with this huge basketball of tournament. Yeah. Everyone gravitated towards Allen Iverson. And I think about like the clips you see from the backstage areas and the locker rooms of the All Star games. All the, LeBron, Dwayne Wade, all coming up and just all they want to do is be around Allen Iverson. He's just like a, a son. People are just drawn to him. Yeah, when we when we went back in the day when I was covering the team, you know, you're on the road, uh, you go past the team hotel because I was never fortunate enough to stay in those type of hotels, it's right? High rent. On, the, on the daily news budget. But when you would walk by, <coughs> excuse me, when you would walk by the team, twenty people, mm -hmm. people that are looking for autographs. Iverson joins the team. First road trip we go on, I go past the hotel. 
hundreds, yeah. hundreds of people waiting out there just to get a glimpse of Allen Iverson. I mean, different kind of swag and mentality. He, he, that's just him. And the thing is, he didn't do that on purpose. It's not like he came in and said, listen, why in the world would that guy, how could he have ever watched Allen Iverson in his prime? The magic knows. And they watched the way he carried himself and the, the swag that he brought. He was, he was as much a cultural icon as he was for anything in basketball, because it wasn't just basketball. Every rocking today. And he knows what he's doing. The other day when he was here, he had the old school maroon Phillies with that sweet Phillies old school yep. jacket. I love it. It was yeah. so funny because I was at the game that night and I'm watching. I find myself, and I, I think I've said this to you before, he came into the Rumpf Classic last August when I was there, and I saw him seated like behind him, and I'm watching, like the game's a close game at the end, of, end. I should mm -hmm. be locked into the basketball action. I'm seeing Allen Iverson jump up, and I'm getting excited because he's excited jumping up watching, you know, and B take a jumper, or at the Rumpf, he was getting, it was uh, the game Bones Highland went off, and right. he's, yeah. he's going, watch him watch basketball, watch him interact with, you know, just the game. A documentary mm -hmm. that came out last year, for everyone, for, you know, you guys, that was like, wow, it's cool to relive it. For me, it was on just as much as, oh yeah, he was amazing at basketball. You know what, th th this sums it up, how, how just how great of a player he was, but what that huge basketball fan that you guys never got to experience mm -hmm. what Iverson was all about. There's look, you can talk about, you know, Michael Jordan, you can talk about the greatest of greats of all time. To be in this city and feel everything that Allen mm -hmm. Iverson was, and it was a lot more than just basketball, like it was so special. And I was fortunate enough to be a sports writer in the city while he was here and to watch other people cover him and then cover him when I'm legendary. Yeah. I mean, legendary. To watch them yeah, be the enthralled by a... Who had seen it all. By, the, yeah, exactly. They, they, they saw Wilt. Yeah. It was it, it, like... Yeah. Jim, and Jim I told, Lynham's the same way. I told this he would take his time a lot and sit me down just to tell me Wilt Chamberlain's mm -hmm. story. Down here at the training complex, the great Alan Lumpkin just walked by, who has been with the 76ers since he was like 14 years old. <laughs> Maybe we'll get him. And Alan Lumpkin mm -hmm. mentioned Scotty Rigo, two behind-the-scenes guys who are just wonderful and great at their jobs. But that's who Iverson is and right. at some points of his life, but that's who he is. I appreciate that. Five years old, so like I, I can appreciate that. But when we get back, I'm going to pick Amy Fadul's brain. And we threw some of this out there a little bit yesterday of the best Sixers of all time. But also, I want Amy's all-time 76ers starting lineup. I want her to give five. We'll take your calls. We'll take your texts. Whatever you want to do, we will be here until 2 o'clock. This is Midday Show's Amy Fedor.
Welcome back as we are down here in Camden, New Jersey at the 76ers training complex as Allen Iverson gets his statue unveiled to I got here before they were able to put the trash bags over top of it. So uh, I you, know man. what the what the statue is. Um, I should we have like a cut? Do we have anything to give I, away? I don't right? think Can we should. Give me that shirt. No, and I'll I, give it away. Uh, no, I don't really have and a it, good. It's the Iverson logo. Yeah, and very I important. I don't have this this many 76ers sweatshirts, and I was like, you know what? I want to go get myself one. So I went down to a, a store in Center City. I parked. I went and bought this sweatshirt. Wonderful sweatshirt. Yeah, is ringing me up for. But I'll be honest with you. I'm picking up a few more shifts around here over the next couple of weeks. I might go get a side you try side to fight job. It. You should just say, just claim. Uh, that's not good. Yeah, it was tough. It's an expensive sweatshirt. Yeah, it was really expensive. We had a thing going on at the Daily News. You used to be able to park on the street, and Pafe was doing it at the time. There were people around there that thought it was funny if you had a ticket on your car, they would take it off. So you never knew you had a ticket. Mm. We were playing at the Plester the Wednesday before Thanksgiving a couple of beers, you know, grab a lunch or something like that. We go out, and I, I was like, this this is great. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. You know, this is so much fun. <laughs> I know. Go exactly to my car, and Gone. there's a boot. Ooh. No. I didn't know of. I had two outstanding tickets, and, yeah, they put a boot on there. And I remember calling and having to pay it and not getting home until, s like, 7 o'clock at night, <sighs> the night before Thanksgiving. You, Ray, the yeah. PPA, they just didn't – they don't know who you are, I guess. Mm. I mean, that, that puts them with a lot of the city. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised that they weren't – they looked at that O2 Avalon. They're like, yeah. Nope, that's it. Yeah. That's not true. From any era, you can grab whatever center you want, whatever point guard you want. And we go to break it, and Amy goes, I do this all the time when I go for walks with my son, Sean. Yeah, I, my I nine year old. He, it's like, let's do top five Sixers of all time. Who's your all time starting Kentucky lineup? Who are the best Eagles that you ever like? It's constantly, it's just have to keep going. Number one overall picks, and you just have to keep going until somebody forgets or doesn't know one or repeats themselves. That is phenomenal. That's what we that do. That's how my brother and I got into a lot of fights when we were younger. The, is that the right? The number of fights we got over arguing over. You know, I go to lunch with my friends, or I used to when I was working morning shows. So the guys I went to high school with and played ball with, we meet for lunch at least a few times a month. And we'll do it, like, just random. One of the guys go, all right, top 10 assist guys, NBA yeah, all time. Go. Yeah. And then, boom, you just start going. Like, I'm going to sell it uh, off. Here we are. I'm doing uh, it for memory. Point guard, <laughs> Allen Iverson. I think Iverson would probably be in our all of our – I could almost put now – Andrew Tony probably would have been a Hall of Famer if he didn't get hurt. He was right. unbelievable. I, 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 I probably would replace Allen Iverson with Tony. I think I did this, I think it was during the All-Star break, and we put up like that 19 uh, Joel Embiid, Jimmy Butler team just to right. have one that was like more recent. And it was, I mean, that 83 team. It Top five all-time NBA stink on LeBron James. People don't like good things. There's nothing it's wrong ridiculous. with Le LeBron talented. Maybe it's the ego thing. People don't like that he's kind of a showman. I don't, I'm not really sure because that used to be celebrated. Right? The whole, like, I'm taking my talents. People poo-pooed that. I don't get it. And he's also really good and can card all five positions. And he's, like, 107 years old and averages 30 points. And it's funny because people that do the LeBron-Michael Jordan comparison That's and tough. all that stuff, it's funny because, uh, like, it is. And I, they're both great. And better yeah. rebounder, better passer, whatever. Yeah. Defensively, <clears throat> Jordan's going to give you more. Defensively, Jordan. Clutch, Jordan. Yeah. Jordan had the fanciness of his game. And it's weird. If you think about it, much like Allen Iverson, as we're down here today at the training complex, Iverson's game probably was better suited. Jordan's game was probably made for today more than, and LeBron's the build finesse. was probably made yeah. for, for games more back then. Yeah. yeah, but you asked, who, not who I thought was the best, but my favorite player. John is not the greatest, but it's wonderful debate. Yeah. We had that debate all the time. We have it in our newsroom. I have it at home. It's wonderful. LeBron James. Iverson for the city of Philadelphia. Oh. Just watching That's here. That's why he's everybody's favorite player here, and like their mm -hmm. favorite Sixer, because yeah. he was so much fun to watch. I mean, when you think of this, that I, I was luck some personal play. Allen Iverson was a different, it was different, different man. Dude. It was just, like, those guys were great, uh, obviously. I mean, I'm not saying I Iverson's, but to watch him was just different. And, like, rookie year, to, to have a crossover on Michael Jordan mm, mm. and then rise up and hit a jumper. I, that's one of those. I talk to you about this all the time, right? That's one of the Daryl Dawkins dunked in the backboard oh. broke. I was sitting on my couch and I jumped up like, oh, my God. Iverson crossed over Michael. That's the excitement that Allen Iverson brought to this It was city. such a different style. No one had seen anybody quite like that. And that, and you brought and up so than any of us. He's just, it was just amazing the different things that that guy could do on the basketball court. All right, we have a lot more coming up for, for you today. At the training complex. Do you have allergies? No. Not a one. 
I have I, allergies, and for some reason, I think it's because of the rain. They are absolutely horrible today. So I apologize to the people out there. We don't, these are just killing me I'm today. Sorry. But we're at the training complex here in Camden. It is Allen Iverson Day down here, the unveiling of the statue. So we'll have a lot more talk about Allen Iverson. We're going to get some guests to come in and talk about number three. All that, a whole lot. you outside. I want to let you know that the 10 o'clock hour, it was brought to you by Window 866 nation or visit windownation.com. I said, yeah, I'll take ah. a cup of coffee, but I didn't want to interrupt. You read that. I'm glad we're going to get coffee now. And we appreciate you. Some water. We appreciate you being here. Amy knows everybody. Two of you, because I get to meet so many people. I, you're this right. You nice are lucky. Yeah, I, I I'll to- you all. Hope you guys are having a, a great day. Hope you have a, a great weekend coming up. Uh, Amy, you'll be able to see her later on tonight. Do- it's, it's, it's maybe the biggest game of the year. Every so, game's the biggest game of the year. I love that. So Sixers host the Orlando Magic Show, who's still at the station. Uh, he, he's very, how should I say, picky Perfect. on words. So he doesn't believe in the term you control your own destiny. Because he says, destiny can't, yeah, destiny can't be controlled. That's, uh, you can't. But I think you can certainly control what you can control. And I think they do. My headphone. Um, but yeah, so you have the Orlando that Nico Patum. That I they just acknowledge. Nico. Nick Patum Sorry. threw it out there. Yeah, that they acknowledge it, Aim. You should. You're, uh, I, I don't really care. You had a good point the other day where you said, uh, maybe just face him just from the jump because this is as healthy as you're going to get. Let's just get it out of the way because you're going to face him in the Eastern Conference Finals. Now look. But I got your point. I was like, all right. I thought about it for half a second and just said no. But I understand where you were coming from. I don't. The championship, of course. We want that to happen. My only point was, was that, that you may be playing your best basketball right now. But the bigger point was uh, the way. That- right. I'm, and I'm with you on that. The thing I thought was like, well, that meant you were the eight seed, which meant you probably 
Right, right. That's the only thing. Yeah. So uh, it, it looks like the six, uh, only, oh, yeah. yeah the, or the Cleveland Cavalier. Yeah, that's I'm the so three, bad. Insanity. At insanity that's the, is that's what That's the is. three, four right now. Okay, so you have to. I did like a scale level. For, all right, well, Hal Greer. Hal Greer? Yeah, I never yeah. saw Hal Greer play. Me neither, but I am now for about 12 years. And so, no, honestly, you, you, but I find myself sometimes just tell stories. It's enthralling the cadence with which he speaks. Am, am I in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> Why did he say Amy? He said my full name, which he never does. But he never now. He, brought, he rocks it in. Um, I adore that man. He's, he's just one of the great assistants. I'm pretty sure we're in Boston. Cheeks is the coach? No. No, was it? I know it was assistant under Eddie Mo. Jordan. Maybe he might have been with Eddie Jordan mm-hmm. also. So um, we're on the road in Boston. It's like you know three degrees out. Horrible, horrible night. My phone rings. Jimmy, hey, what's up, coach? What, what's going on? Nothing. What's going on with you? I'm pretty good. I think I'm going to go. I think I was uh, Malik Rose. I think I was going out to dinner with whatever. But I was like, are you make serious? Sure you're checking in, make sure you're okay. He's like, Whenever you're on the road, make sure make sure you don't do that. He high is high quality. Human. Oh, high just quality a great, human. great. So anyway, getting so, yeah, back so to I'll what put we were talking in there about for, for Jimmy uh, Wilt, obviously, and that means I've got to put Joel as my five, my four. That's that's what I'm rocking wow. with. Wow. All right, wait, Iverson, Greer, Wilt, J- Dr. J. Okay. All right, that's it. That's that will protect the rim yeah, if you want and grab it. 55 rebounds defense. or something like that. So, so we were looking at some of the matchups that the Sixers. Made. One would be, I'm fine with that. They'll, they'll breeze through them. Yeah. Where would you put the New York Knicks on that list? Because they're like a four and a half to me. I don't like facing that New York Knicks team. The reason I don't, I don't like it is because Jalen Brunson has the cape every day that they let that guy walk out their gym. Um, I don't know. I, I would probably put them in. I was going to say three and a half because no Julius Randle, I think, hurts them. Yeah. Josh Hart, though, I think he's a great player, is not going to give you the offensive output that Julius Randle was going to give you defensively no. at five every single game. He, he averaged really 24 to. and nine rebounds. So like, that's a huge loss. It's a really big loss, and he's a very nice player. But I think Josh gives you something. Obviously, Dante, we know here, DiVincenzo can certainly win game series. So that's why they're a little bit concerning more than some of the other teams out there. Four is out there, and I think everybody else is like, eh. But the Knicks, are, they would be the next in line just because of Jalen Brunson. And that kid has the, the dog in him. Like, he just he wants to win yeah. all the time. He has that closers mentality from the tip-off. And I just think it's for their team to be able to beat the Sixers at every facet of the game. Just because the Sixers, you know, you, Ray, you mentioned other, these other guys there. So Jalen Brunson is the reason that team gives me a little bit more of a pause than it should. They give me more of a pause. That always can get. It reminds me of so, uh, of so many of those crafty point guards. And to me, this all the time. He, like, I, I would sit on the sidelines and watch that. Y'all. Nobody knows forget. how to cover left handers. They Anders. forget. People forget. They forget. The, and it's the amazing. It's just an odd, odd thing. So one of the teams you didn't mention, Bucks, as far as a concern level, one through five. A two? Whoa! There's a lot. The reasons we were talking about the joy that we feel mm-hmm. with Joel Embiid and Nick Nurse, that's the reasons I feel, right? Questionable health. Yes. Damian Lillard, the calf. In, that looked like he took that like a sniper got him. I was duck. I thought that was a more concerning player unless they're playing the Sixers, of course. But I think that, yeah. <laughs> Damn. The, the Sixers have done well against the Bucks. When they've been fully healthy, they did well against the Bucks when they had Drew. They replaced it offensively with Damian. Look, listen, that man can sh- he the entire gym is his oyster, and he could shoot from wherever he wants. Defensively, Tyrese Maxey will absolutely cook. He's in range. He's exactly. in range. Yeah. There was a kid. I told this story last week, but I don't think you're around. When uh, Lasalle went to the Sweet Sixteen, uh, uh, I don't know what year it was. Maybe sixteen. Something somewhere or around there. Yeah. yeah. So I was on the West Coast with the Sixers. LaSalle was coming out to the, to the West Coast, so I mm-hmm. called my boss. I'm like, look, I, I, I know the coach real well. I could close your eyes and be like, oh, Jimmy's here. He could imitate Jimmy Lynham, and with the hand gestures and everything, oh, my God, it was the greatest thing ever. If anybody knows Matt and he's out there, he's got to call in and give us his Jimmy Lynham imitation because it was absolutely phenomenal. Two and a half. Does that make you feel better? Oh, I don't care. I like two. I'm I don't, not, I don't I'm need not to feel anyway. I'm super concerned with them. I mean, maybe that's a lot of like things in the background that I think that people don't really. You mentioned Please strange. going on so, there, yeah. Obviously, I think that that's an organization that really wants to keep. And they certainly, I like the matchup between, if you're looking at point guard matchups, I know that Damian Lillard is going to, Tyrese Maxey's not the best defender, but he's a good defender. And they're going to go ahead and gang you know, up on him and have maybe Ubre over there, get a little bit of range. I think Kyle Lowry is a good defender. I don't see them 
getting cooked. Sixers. Yes. That'd be With a, Doc a Rivers as the coach. Yeah. That'd be a storyline that's reversed for us. There is some storylines, yeah, let alone the Sixers going into the playoffs. And should they play the Bucks, it means that they're advanced. This would have been beating Doc Rivers in the second round. So you advance past the second round. You get, you know, that kind of, you know, monkey off your chest. Even more poetic justice. <laughs> go, go down 3-1 just to make it real just interesting. Just to make it interesting. And then, Got you right where yeah. we want you, Doc. Chalk that one up for <laughs> hated since he left, it seems. Well, because he, he just doubles down on it. Like, he goes into... You know, commentating on, I don't know, a better idea or, to his mind, what really happened. I think that he, I think he has not come out spelling very well. I right. mean, since he's left, he's taking credit for the James Harden trade. Right. He oh, has yeah, yeah, yeah. first, then the traveling crew yeah, under the bus. Yeah. Yeah, saying they're not professional enough. That's why they're 17 and 17 with him. He took over a team that was 30 and 13. He and started Giannis after the All-Star Damian break. Lillard. He has Giannis and Damian Lillard. Two guys that can score 40 points without even blinking an eye. You yeah. would have thought they gave him the Hornets and said, go make... Defense is going to be like, listen, I was dealing with, you know, prima donnas and I had all, all these injuries. I think Doc's second year and saying, look, man, his offense isn't easy on guards. And it's tough. And we saw him in Tyrese Maxey's face. He also never practiced. A lot. Emails every day yeah. uh, of update what the Sixers are doing tomorrow. Practice. Tomorrow, it practice, always practice. Off, off. Be there 12-15. Like, the, the, Nick Nurse reminds me of, of, I mean, like breaking into the gym at my, uh, why don't you just come to the rectory and ask? Like I, I interviewed him a couple weeks ago, right? So I came down here. Sat through practice and all. He did his media thing, and then he and I went. And I look at Rob King, their their PR extraordinaire person, and we just kind of caught eyes. And he goes, "Oh, he can do both at the same." He, he's is that the biggest? What do you look forward? What do you look most forward to in this Seventy Sixers team in a playoff run? The coaching. I mean, is you, it? that what you're, healthy Joel Embiid running the, the, those that two man game that they have? Kelly Oubre shining, being the aggressive player. These are the things that I'm looking for. Kyle, I don't think it's been. I don't think it's understating to say like it's been a minute since you look forward to coaching. Yeah. And, I, and that's when really I was like, this is like this is so much different. And it's not. That's not. Players have to feel it. If we're stated that when and I, I remember being around during the process and Brett Brown. I knew I, I would watch film with him God and bless. he would tell me the plays that you know. This is what we call this. The ball was to go from uh, Saturday night. It, I was. This is going on. Oh, absolutely. You hear the squeaks. You hear the yelling. You hear the ball. Play. A lot of this. A lot of that. Where do they go? Where do the pieces? What is going to be the starting lineup? What is going to be the rotation? Or. Could it just be situational? Starting lineup. What is going to be the rotation? Or could it just be situational? We'll talk about that. 76.
welcome back as we are at the training complex here in Camden, New Jersey, as Allen Iverson will get his statue unveiled. Did, see- did you see anything? Because you can kind of see his foot out there. Yeah, I saw. Okay. Do you think he can get it from that? I don't think so. Okay. No. No, I don't think I can either. I, I continue with that even though I know that. Okay, Probably hand to right. the ear. Now, Amy and I know what the uh, pose is. Don't give beat. it away. Uh, we're not no, going to give it. We're not going to give it away. But I will ask you: Do you think it was the right one? And then nothing again. All of them would be great choices because that's how iconic Iverson was. Is that any of those poses that they would have with? I'm cool with. Is it the one I would have picked? No, I'm with Ray. I think I would have done the ear. Um, well, it might be the ear. We don't know, Aim. Well, I shouldn't say that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the, where the path we walk ourselves down. Well, you knew when you saw the foot. Yeah, I know that it wasn't yeah. um, going to so be I, something I, like I, that. So I, I, I gave that one up. That's on me. That's all yeah. right. I'll keep quiet. But no, I, honestly, like I studio. thought it'd been pretty funny to do the the press conference. But no, I thought the 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 one that they chose is lovely. It's it's it any it, it, there's that if it isn't that um you have to find out everybody. I've already kind of given it away. But there are two that there's two that I had in my top two, and it was one of those. So we had a great suggestion yesterday, and uh, was it a caller or was it you or somebody else about the step over? Their picture taken the with over Iverson and is stepping iconic. over. And when I really thought about that, probably would have been my my third thought of like, oh wow, that would have been really great. And when your caller said that, I was like, ooh, I, there's people laying on the ground. I don't know. But. I kind of brought that up, and he's like, what are you talking about? We we sit on the ground, we're watching TV. Somebody's you have no chairs, ground, you have no couches. So we do, we do. I, but I, think about not. like, no. I think they're all just fall down <laughs> drunk. Game. That's like, not true. It's like, oh, it's he's like passed out on the ground. How much square footage you think I can afford? I don't. I know. I'm confused. Well, you were going to walk your way because we could walk back to your apartment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're we're coming. Delicious. It could there be is because one, one of the feet is raised on the statue. I think ending in a jump shot or ending something. Ending in a jump shot. And someone I thought brought up one time. MVP eight. trophy, yeah. right? So, that one there also. Yeah. The six that the Sixers put out was hand to ear, crossover, dunk, step over, MVP, and then I, my phone. Yeah, that's yeah. Slam yeah, slam. yeah. So there is a uh, there's a play from Allen Iverson's career that. Uh, I put the top of the key behind the three-point line. The foul shot getting missed by the Sixers and him crashing lane go up and one hand slam, follow slam. It made everybody on down. I was, I think I was right, exactly. Allen Iverson and crashed the boards that way. Uh, his energy level that he had aim uh, for mostly that he had. I honest to God, I don't think I've ever seen it matched. Not just in basketball but at a professional level in any sport by any individual. And that's individual. why when you go back, if you really know the context behind it, that's really what he's saying. And Neil Hartman, if you're out there listening, Neil Hartman is the one that asked that question that day for Comcast Sportsnet, now NBC Sports Philadelphia. Really what he's saying is like, not a game, not a game, practice. And he's not saying practice is not important. Obviously, that's what the takeaway is. Practice is a joke. It's not what he was saying. He's saying that's what he does. His blood, sweat, and tears are in the game. 40-plus right. minutes, that guy goes... Absolutely. I think they listen 180 soaking wet. This is a, the smallest guy. Pound for pound, people will say, if you ask some of the great players out there, who was the pound for pound, they said the best guy was Allen Iverson, given what he was working with, the size and the stature and everything. So when I go back and I think about the practice thing, that's what I remember because that's how he lived his basketball life. It was all about the game. Practice was fine, important. I get it. It's a necessary evil. It's not that he didn't like it. It's that the game was everything to him, and that's exactly how he played it. Yeah, I, Maybe I, to, to his detriment, too, sometimes. Sure, and you had a coach often talked about his favorite times of basketball are practice, mm-hmm. where he can teach like, together. That was the big thing. Iverson wasn't a huge fan of practice, as a lot, most, I'll say 90% of the time, in sports, it falls apart. Oh, this yeah. is, you know, oil and water here. Mm-hmm. Never is it going to combine. Or it might have been when Larry Brown got coach of the year, Iverson went up and coach at? Yeah, he did that on the, yeah, did where's my coach at? And then another people. Completely different, but the same aim. The same aim, yeah. And one of the guys knowing what was best for the other guy. Right. And trying to convince that other guy. It's easy to do, especially no. when you're Allen Iverson, you're, you're you know, one of the best players in the league. You are adored, all, you know, nationally, everywhere. And to come in and have, you know, an, 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 a throwback coach having to come at you and say, no, you need to do it this yeah, way. And let's face it. He's never really he, think that you've heard that in his Hall of Fame speech. He doesn't think he would have gotten anywhere. You needed to have certain coaches. but this. So he got his first taste of coaching at Georgetown, but he didn't stay there that long. And then he comes into the NBA, and everybody's like, ooh, look at you. You're amazing. And it was, it was funny. Like, the biggest hurdle wasn't basketball. It was just 
communicating with each other. Please listen to what mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Or Iverson, please let me be the player I know I am. You had to meet somewhere in between. And Pat Croce, who we, we were told earlier is going to join us today, he was the guy that had to oversee it all. And God, he and Billy King, what they must have gone through. I mean, we're talking. We're still here. Anyway, I had to go out and interview Pat Croce. All right, where am I meeting him? Uh, he's jumping out of a plane in Millville, New Jersey. That's so we need right. you. We need you to go down there. So here I am in a field watching Pat Croce come down so I can interview him. But absolutely, you know? all these guys. I mean, it's just. But he was the perfect guy for it. Honestly, because and and because he has that kind of Zen master kind of vibe, you had to have somebody because if you really just talk about bad scientists, that's just experiment just blows up right in your face. You have to really kind of know how to massage that relationship. Yeah, it was it was such wild time. John Smallwood was also one of our NBA beat writers. They were both at the uh, practice press mm-hmm. conference. I, I still remember that day like it was yesterday, being in the office, and 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 we got the phone call. Iverson's kind of going off here. We uh, we got to have all, all hands on deck. And Richter, yeah. just that in th- you were you know, always the drawn braids, to him. Everything. He was one of the first people mm-hmm. ever in the NBA to wear Absolutely. to wear braids. And and you know, much like Jordan on the bench in street clothes. And it's like, all right, cool. He's one of us. And then the NBA stepped in and said, no, you got to wear suit jackets and all that stuff. And to tears, and he's a very yeah, emotional he guy. He's a very emotional guy. To tears, starts talking about what Aaron McKee meant to him. Oh my but, gosh. And not only if you like really listen to what he was saying, he and behind the scenes personally lifting him up, helping him, uh, doing so much for him, being that's maybe what, what got him in some trouble at different times, but he's loyal, so loyal. And to have Aaron McKee in his corner, here's a guy that he wouldn't have met, obviously, unless they played here, but I think they had similar backgrounds and they grew up in similar circumstances and different things. I just think that Aaron looked out for him in the way that a big brother would. And I A lot of people know of Aaron McKee's career, Simon Gratz. What a great – right before the game, I called Phil. Hey, how's it going? He goes, he's about to take his last breath. So i got to write the game story, but I'm also doing a tribute to that. – That's he's cool. He's just a high quality. Uh, he's a great, great guy. And, well, and hopefully we'll get him on. Yeah, this, to a fault. This is almost – I mean, I don't want to – and I think that they're as equally as excited. Yeah, the, the, and another little Aaron McKee story. So my son's a senior in high school playing a uh, playoff game up in North Jersey. Kid on the, in the G League now, but – uh, I'm walking, you know, to my seat. I hear somebody call my name. I look up in the corner of the gym. There's Aaron. Go up and say hi to him. He's looking at Isaiah Wong. And I'm walking by, and we say goodbye to each other. And I just turn to the kid, and I said, after he only scored 30, Allen Iverson idolizes yeah, this guy. like his favorite guy. And, and the kid's face was like, oh, my God. So I walk away. Yeah, Aaron would never say that. No. Yeah. I walk away. Two things. Or I hope that made an impression and helps Aaron out. Two, does that kid even know who Allen Iverson is? Because they're so no, yeah. young anymore. Yeah, they know but Allen I'm sure, Iverson. I'm sure he they did, yeah. Allen. Okay, when we get back, I teased it before, and I have to get this from Amy. They're like eight, nine, maybe even ten deep. What's your starting lineup? What might your rotation be? I'll give her an opponent and see how maybe it matches up. All that and more, we're here, 97.5, The Fanatic.
How close mm-hmm. do you think that'll happen? Any more memories I have down here? You and I have been here an awful lot, of course, covering the team when the place opened. Yeah. Uh, all of those things. This facility with me. Brett Brown getting hired in one of the third to this, where it was one of the first in the league. Guys could go into the gym whenever. Exactly. Yeah. A workout room, a pool. Uh, right across from where we are, it's a barber shop. Mm-hmm. And I remember that's being discussed. I said, come on, what's it going to be? He's like, I think it's going to be. Allen gets his statue right full. Kind of big, big game as we things. One slip up, they they have no shot. Ch- team, team, eighty one. Right. Let, let's acknowledge. Let, let's acknowledge against the Magic, a talented, dangerous team. But no, I I against the Magic, a talented, dangerous team. But no, I I my confidence. Joel Embiid was going to have meniscus surgery. My confidence. Joel Embiid was going to have meniscus surgery because of a, a some kind of surgery. Uh oh. Because of a, a some kind of surgery. Uh oh. What, what do you expect out of the Sixers? Right. Yep. Two or three. What, what do you expect out of the Sixers? Right. Yep. Two or three. So they were right there that they host a playoff game. So they were right there that they host a playoff game. They're not in the playing game. Then I. They're not in the playing game. Then I. And it's like, wow, he looks like that. Yes. Uh, he and lo- not at 100. Like, I just think he's that much better of a basketball player than he's yes. ever been when he came back from injury. And six points a game almost. And he said himself that he wasn't 100%, dropped 70, himself that he wasn't 100%, dropped 70. It's fun fact. Is that right? Yes. Wow. We brought that up last week. We about did. It never I, happened I, before. I did the trivia Two question. Teams. So Westbrook with James Harden and obviously Durant. Kyrie down oh, there. Yeah. Maxi, and you're getting Joel Embiid, who's playing the best basketball. And you're getting Joel Embiid, who's playing the best basketball. Like, that's where. So Heat team, and I know they have Eric Spolstra, and I have no doubt if they lose that win, we'll take the Celtics to the brink. And that would be great. But. It'll be interesting to the brink, and that would be great. But it'll be interesting to see. I, I just think for those other players to look out there and say, that's Joel Embiid, and he's out there. He's practicing. Because I, I wanted to see, because a lot of times you and I will talk basketball, and we see the yeah. same things off to the side. So Joel Embiid, there's about, B gets a rebound, passes it off. So you're thinking, ah, oh, man, I hope they throw the ball out of bounds, or somebody gets fouled, you want him to get out. And beats late, he's, late fourth quarter right. in that game. It was funny. We, we came in on a timeout. We usually come on in the fourth quarter and say, hey, we're coming up. Make sure you keep it tuned in. And... And I think I said something. I, yeah, I was watching as you coming said right that. Back. Because I thought that would have been a perfect opportunity. Like, let, we don't need to play him. But I situations. There's only one way to see those things, and that's in a game, no matter yeah. what the score is. And, and I, it could have been. When did your voice <laughs> gets a little higher? So I was trying to play the moment, Aim. So, all right, I've been teasing it forever. But when we get back, I want to see what Amy's thoughts are on this rotation. Because so many names now are need to see what kind of matchup she would go with. Also, people are starting to dribble in here, so hopefully we'll be able to get a, a few guests for you. We've been told, we've been told Pat Croce might stop by. We're hoping to get Alan Iver. A lot for me. We just got this life coffee. And win $1,000. Oh, yeah. One. Or you can enter it on the Fanatic app or at n- Winners will get a call from Beasley to make sure you answer your phone. If it says b 75 the Fanatic signing bonus is present. Drive. And good luck.
So much fun being down here today, running into all the people their way. A luncheon starts at noon. The unveiling of the Allen Iverson statue with us as it, it looks horrible outside. Like, I it's can see the front. Yes, the, the statue. A number one. Yes, so they'll the be able to unveil the unveiling ceremony that I've been to down here. So can't wait to see that, rightfully so, on Sunday for the uh, season finale against the Brooklyn Nets. But a lot of fun stuff going on here, too. Actually, I just had a friend text me. Uh, he's dating a girl, and he said, yeah, I, I told we were, are you serious that these two don't work together? Good vibes. Oh, there's Dave Schaller with some pretzels. Hopefully he remembers the radio people here. Uh, I, I'm starting to not like being described as such. <laughs> oh, Lord. started when you were 12, so it's fine. I did. You're right. No yeah. Deal. No I, big deal. Let's go with you. What, I don't have any problem I saying. almost texted I you was, that day because I knew he had been a shooter. around. <laughs> where, where do you go with this lineup now? That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. The ball in the minutes, he's, he's going to get you 16 points. I think... It, his percentage is very good for three-pointer. We were walking into...